finding domain and range from a linear graph in context. So our problem is, here says, Charmaine wanted to study how the area of a rectangle changes with the length if its width is fixed. She computed the areas of several triangles that have the same width and different lengths. She then plotted the results and connected them with a line as shown below. The graph shows the area in meters squared, that's along our y-axis, versus the length, right? It's along our x-axis. Find the domain and range of the functions shown below. Write your answers as inequalities using X or Y as appropriate, or you may instead click on empty set or all real numbers, okay? So first, let's do domain. And I'm gonna write my answer up here instead of down here in the little spaces just to keep it a little more up here by the graph. Um, so the domain are the possible X's, okay? Where do we have X values where there will be points on the graph, okay? So the graph starts here at zero. So I know that my X values start at zero. And then if this just keeps going up forever, right, I'll just keep having X values here right, along the x-axis of my graph. Now when I get out here, my graph will be up high, okay, further than we can see just right here, but it'll be there, right, because this little arrow means it just keeps going on forever. So the further out I go this way in the x direction, the higher my graph will be up this way, but it'll be there, okay. So my domain Right? or I have x values for this graph starting at zero and then going out forever this way, which is to infinity, we say. So I only have one endpoint. If I'm gonna write an inequality, okay, I'm comparing my x's to that endpoint zero. Right? This is the divider between where I have graph okay, and where I don't, back this way, so I'm comparing my x's to zero, and I have values when I'm greater than zero or to the right of that zero. So x is going to be greater than zero. All of my x values will be greater than zero. And since I have a closed circle right here, then I'm gonna add the equal to. Okay, so I would enter this as the inequality for my domain. Now in class, we've been also talking about interval notation. So I'm gonna really quickly just put this in interval notation as well. In interval notation, my x's start at zero and they go to infinity. The zero has a filled in circle, so I would open with a square bracket here and then infinity always gets rounded. So this interval notation represents exactly the same information as this inequality. This is the one Alex wants. Okay, so for range, we're gonna do the same thing only with our y's, okay? So now I'm looking along the y-axis. Where do I have graph, right? Or where is my graph going, right, with respect to the y-axis? So again, I'm starting with zero. I don't have anything below that, only above it, okay? So this time, I'm gonna be, be uh, comparing y to zero, and again, just like the x, right, I have graph for all of these y values, right? If I go over, I can always find the graph, and I can keep going on forever. Doesn't matter how far or up I go or how high I get, the graph will always be out there somewhere because this goes forever, okay? So uh, this is going to be y greater than or equal to zero for my domain. Um, in interval notation, it would look exactly like this, okay? Again, zero, closed circle, but I'm going to infinity just in the y direction. But this is the one you would enter into Alex. They're asking for the inequality. 